Man, I am so, so happy. You guys can't believe how happy I was that Tales of Rise won JRPG of the year. Like, my heart couldn't handle it when I got the news yesterday. I was just at work and everyone was just so, so happy. And I feel the same. So I'm really glad. Like, the game just itself just means a lot to me. So, this allows me to perfectly segue to this segment of segment two. Hi, you guys again. And knowing the fact that I have my Xion Vimer, I'm going to more wall scroll over there. I have a shirt of her on recently. Oh, you can't actually see it, but my LP of the Tales of Rise soundtrack just arrived too. And honestly, all's right with the world. So, hey guys, we can now roll the intro just with that. As usual, um, I will be done in post, and before I even get to anything, I just want to express, like, a huge, huge amount of gratitude to you guys. Like, I cannot believe, uh, I know it's not, like, a ton to most people, but, like, the amount of numbers that I got for segment one of the Tales of Arise podcast is actually so, like heartwarming to me like i never expected to get like almost 10 likes on it and my videos haven't done numbers like that in a long long time so i'm really glad something that like you know i feel really personally for like as i've mentioned all throughout segment one like this game really really changed my life and i've met so much amazing people so i don't know <laughs> again um i don't know what side of the planet you're on but hello again you guys I was gushing and just like so teary-eyed already. Um, hi, my name is Jared or Codex, and welcome back to the Tales of Rise podcast. Um, this is segment two. <clears throat> I was just getting more towards like a preface because, like, your support has been absolutely amazing, and I can't believe it. Like, I usually hate talking about this, and I still hate talking about it because it's not something that I want to like you know be super attached to, but like. Knowing the fact that I got, like, a really substantial growth. Like, I think I gained, like, five or six subscribers or seven or whatever. Like, in that short amount of time, like, it, it's really meaningful to me. Like, I haven't had movement like that on my channel in a long, long time. So I'm really, really grateful about that. Um, it was... <laughs> you guys have no idea how fun, how fun it was to do segment one. Like... I was actually joking with my parents about this. I was like, oh yeah, I'm about to go podcast. And I was like, I don't know how long I'm going to talk about this game that I've liked for so, so long. And then like when I was, I kind of like jokingly said, oh, I'll probably talk about for like maybe two or three. And that literally happened. So yeah, the amount of like genuine life change this game has given me is not like understated at all. Like it's so true. So as I had mentioned in like so many things before, no amount of posts or fan fiction I've written or the amount of times I talk about daily can really amount to how much this game like means to me. So yeah, um, it, it's really, really heartwarming. So I'm just like super grateful for you guys. So thank you so much for all the support. Um, I hope even if it's not like JRPG, uh, JRPG related, I know I talked about this before on my Twitter. Um, I'm more of a variety channel, and I'm kind of sad that um, most of my new friends that I've met online, like, they're more centered towards that, and, like, I felt kind of bad because, like, not all of my content's about that, so if you're here to say, I am, like, extremely grateful that you're doing that because, like, I've been an indie game channel, I play MOBAs and stuff, I even do vlogging here and there, we do, like, all sorts of stuff on this channel, it's literally just me as me, so... Thank you so much for just, you know, accepting me. So that means a lot. <clears throat> and anyway, so 
One other thing before I actually start getting through this actual segment is that in segment one, when I actually rewatched it about, say, two or three or four times, because, you know, being a content creator, you kind of rewatch the stuff that you always put out. And I was just like, man, I forgot about, like, the entire. I can't believe I forgot about the Dake Faisal promise scene until the very end, because, like, that entire part of the game is so, so touching. That's why I've rewatched it, like, hundreds of times, like, unapologetically. It's so moving. And literally, that's why all of my wallpapers are just like, this frame of Xion from the promise scene, they're this one of like her hushing outfit or whatever, or like this perfect scene of her with perfect lighting. Like she looks so beautiful. So like, yeah, knowing the fact that I had forgotten about that, um, this is literally why so like that quote, you know, too much of a good thing. Like this is literally that, like it's too much of a good thing is actually a great thing because there's so many little things that you can talk about and as you can see i went on for like almost three hours and i'd still forgotten a lot of really important things like i'd forgotten um besides the dake phasal prom scene with all of each of the couples you know doholim and kasara and then rinwell and law and of course shion and alfin because they each have like their own little moments there and i also forgot the um the scene after you go to the wedge, there's also that really cute scene with Kisara, Rinlo, and Xion when Xion's kind of contemplating about like when she has to confess later when you go find the ship. You know, she had been thinking about that in the back of her mind. And then Rinwell's just like, You don't look so good, Xion. And then Xion's like, Oh, it's nothing. And then Rinwell's just like, Yeah, Xion, you're really bad at hiding your emotions. He's like, I'm sorry, you know what, you're right. So. Yeah, knowing the fact that, like, those three as a group, like, that was really cute. See, that was also something I'd forgotten about um, when I talked about the narrative. So, yeah, this game, like, sure, in hindsight, it can actually seem like very, like, a very straightforward love story in some sense. But it's actually so complex if you, like, interweave all the skits, if you interweave all the dynamic dialogue that's in there, if you interweave the actual narrative, and then you interweave, you know, each of the pairings like it could be any of the pairings it could be like different pairings it could be like Xion and Law for example or like Dohalim and Rinwell like there are all sorts of pairings and they're all great like that's the thing that's amazing about this main cast is that you literally cannot find a bad pairing in the main cast it doesn't matter what combination it is um, I had mentioned that in segment one but like that's how great it is like this cast is so so good so I just wanted to point that out anyway Welcome to segment two. Segment two is going to have three things. Uh, I mentioned this in segment one. In segment uh, one, we had done visuals, we had done combat, we had done narrative, and then we had done post game. So that's more of like the actual game game itself. But now for this segment, this is more of a fun segment, honestly. Um, this is where we're going to do things like we're going to talk about wishlist things like. I know it's already been stated that Tales of Rise has been 100% confirmed to not have a sequel or anything, but we can always, you know, you can always dream. Don't ever give up on it. So, there are things that I have a personal wish list for, and then um, we have a very small Q&A segment. Uh, I want to thank everyone who interacted with the post. Um, I've only gotten two questions, but man, that's a lot more than nothing. So, I'm really, really grateful to anyone that reached out. Um, you're going to be... Properly shouted out here, and it tags and everything. So thank you so much for even considering. Uh, I've done Q and A's are actually one of my favorite things to do during podcasts because it actually feels really interactive. It's really cool to you know answer very specific questions that people have. It's really interesting to seeing like other people's perspectives about the game coming to me and what I think about that. So I think that's really cool. And so we have that. And last but not least. <laughs> what everyone and even I've been kind of wanting to talk about too because people are probably really curious how can how I can like you know so easily gush about Xion Weimer Amaris Daymore practically every day so you know th that'll be the comfort character segment that's gonna be the very last part I'll wrap up a couple things uh, thank you guys at the end and then I'll talk about some more plans if you're more curious about you know my podcasting in the future of course they'll still be going so we'll get to that. And yeah, so welcome. 
Now let's talk about wishlist things. Now, the thing that's funny about thinking about this is that having a wishlist for a game where most of the things have already, like, been, like, you know, conceived, like, it's already been confirmed that they aren't doing a sequel for it, and, like, it, it kind of, like, throws everything under the rug already, but still, like, as someone who literally fantasizes about every single cute, wholesome possibility past the game, like, for everyone that's, of course, been it, seen the wedding scene, seen the planet merge, like, everything is just like, man, <laughs> what could the possibilities be if there was anything for it? So, yeah. The first thing I wanted to talk about was the possibility of post-planet merge exploration. And this is something that I, like, I had always thought about, even, like, after I'd been in the game twice, once for a new game and once for a new game plus, I was just like, man, <laughs> Dana looks so pretty down. You know, the, the scene, pretty much the last animated scene, we're not counting the wedding part because that wasn't technically animated, it was just a slideshow. Uh, during that part where Alf and Cheon come back in that like cool Renis Alma shape and then, you know, the rest of the party's there. And then like, Cheon hugs Rinwell and then everyone looks, I was just like, wow, well, like, Look, the plants merged and everything. This is amazing. And it's just like, I'm thinking to myself, where is that on Dana? Because, like, I kind of feel like that would have been around, like, Niez or something. Because, you know, more towards the lake sides. Or it could have been, you know, near the cliff side where Shion and Alvin talked before going to Lanagas on the ship. So there's, like, so many small little details. That I'm just like, man, I wonder how pretty that would be for the game. But then, considering things for like development I was just like yeah that could kind of take a while but yeah that's something I'd always always thought about and something that's interesting too it's in my notes here is that like I wonder how different each realm would be now since the planet merged because it's like well if the planet merged then would certain realms get bigger would certain realms get smaller would they look different because you know if you're taking one and one and you put them together it's just like is that kind of big but in hindsight, you know, it's still the same shape and everything, so I don't know. Just kind of putting it out there is kind of like a theory, but yeah. Oh yeah, also, um, something that I thought about too, considering the scene I just talked about. I was like, man, if there was a skit for like, when Alvin and Xion come back, and then you know before Xion hugs Rinmo and everything, I was like, what if there was a skit like right there? Like that would be... So perfect, but they couldn't do it obviously in like an anime art, so it's not like actually in the game. Even though to be fair, in the game that'd be really cool too. So yeah, I'm just putting that out there. <laughs> like, I've talked about this like a bazillion times on Twitter. I was like, I'll literally take anything if it means going back to the game. I mean sure, I could replay the game a million times, I'd be okay with it, but like still, if there were things past the point of already completing it, like literally anything, I was just like, man, please. Just give you some reason to get <laughs> go back to it or like something based on the end game already so yeah that's it for the post planet merge thing oh yeah also i'm pretty sure a lot of people thought about this too when the wedding happens you know after you wait past the entire credit scene and i thought man <laughs> thinking about it now you guys would not believe my initial reaction to like beating the game <laughs> For the first time, God, I was, like, so teary-eyed. I was so moved. Like, I literally, like, I was sitting there and, like, well, I'm even getting, like, a little teary-eyed thinking about it. Like, there was, um, I had put the controller down. I was literally just staring at my screen with, like, like, my hand near my eye to prevent myself from crying. But, like, man, the music was so beautiful. And, like, them showing all of, like, the rough concept art for all the really important scenes, like, you know. Alvin saving Xion from her thorns and like the hushing scene. Uh, oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot to point that out. But like, when I had first seen the promise scene, something that st really struck a chord with me, I was like, wait, I'm really sure this scene's like super duper important or something. Because like, the build up from showing each of the couples or each of the pairs having like those extremely, extremely romantic moments. And then it goes to Alpha the Chios for the, I was like, oh no, man, my heart's not gonna be able to take this. Which explains me 
literally sharing screenshot the same screenshots of it almost every day because like it is so so heartwarming and i'm like super attached to it so yeah when they had shown the rough sketches for that scene uh, in the credits i was just like oh my god dude there it is the most iconic scene ever so yeah anyway getting back to the point um when you go to the when it shows the wedding happening i was just like man those outfits from the wedding those would be super cool dlc outfits like if they had ever ever even lightly considered that like i would be so happy with that so yeah i thought it'd be really sweet and cute and i'd mentioned here that it'd be like poetic if they had done something done something for that so now um going more down this wish list uh <laughs> There's like tons of skit things that I think about all the time. That's which explains me being a fan fiction writer because it's like you know, us fan fiction writers is it exist in this space where it's just like you know what, if they aren't gonna do it, I'll just write about it myself. So yeah, here's some ideas that I've had. I thought it'd be really cute if there was like a skit before the wedding had happened. Like you know, I don't know who knows maybe like Alfred and Xion getting ready for the wedding and like. All the rest of the party chatting before the wedding happens or them like throwing the bouquet in the air like all these things i was just like man that would be so so cute and then i also put here that there'd be a skit like as the wedding's happening or during it because like man <laughs> just thinking about it now my heart can't take that like it'd be so it'd be really really cute if that was like in any realm of possibility but yeah i think about that stuff nearly every day like it's so cute to think about and i'm just you know uh all the people have said this the same way i'm just really glad we got a happy ending so you know um it this kind of alludes to it in the same way but like something that i thought about is is that like having such a good ending especially like during such rough times since you know like independent epic and stuff like i really think it's so befitting to have something that's like so wholesome and like so sweet that we can always think about so i'm just really really and plus also like out of the Gion are incredible characters so like it'd be really 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 depressing and heartbreaking if it went the other way so uh, i'm just so relieved and glad that we got that like in the end like that was the end so yeah that's it and then Pass out of course, oh god, I talk about this like literally almost every day, like if I could get any sort of like post-game DLC with like Xion without her thorns, because like in the skit called Hope, which is when you're in Lanagus, and she talks, Xion talks to Alfin about like how she she's literally always been dreaming about having her thorns be gone. And then, you know, of course, you get to the ending, and then she doesn't have them anymore. So it's just like, man, thinking about, like, every single cute thing that... Or some of the callbacks, even. Like, during that skit, a lot of people point this out, too. It's just like, man, I wanted to give Law a deserved smack. Everybody's just like, why did that happen during the ending? So, yeah, there's a lot of, like, really minute details, but also just, like, really sweet things that'd be really really cute if that was like you know ever to come to fruition but like yeah i'm not gonna sugarcoat it at all that i think about this stuff literally every day which explains to me like why i've written like five chapters of fan fiction already i mean i'm actually supposed to be writing um this month too there's a christmas special for the current au that i'm writing i'm just like god writing about this stuff and thinking about the stuff always makes me so happy. But if they could ever explore any of these possibilities, yeah. Any skits with Sean with other thorns, I would take immediately. So, yeah, I'm just putting that out there. And then finally, uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, so two more things. Uh, the last thing was that, like, I'm sure we all feel the same. And knowing the fact how super talented fan artists are, man, if you go on Twitter... You can find some of the fluffiest, cutest Xion and Alfin fan art ever. It's so adorable. And a lot of the um, artists, too, they do, like, little manga panels. It's so hard because, like, knowing the fact they're from Japan or they're from China or some of them are even from, like, Korea or Taiwan or something. 
Like, they make really cute strips, like manga strips. And I can't read any of them. But it's really adorable to try to, like, try to interpret what they're saying. But yeah, it's so awesome. I, I mean, I'm sure any of us feel the same, but, like, any sort of fluff, as they call it, or I've said, like, a billion times already, like, any sort of really cute romantic fluff past the game ending already like as skits like god that would be so so cute and then additionally uh the last thing that i wanted to ask or i mean wish list for was uh it's really interesting to think about this now that i actually think about it and i put it on virtual paper but like <clears throat> in when i talked in segment one how I really didn't like Rhythm at all at the beginning, and almost that like that massive turn, like the amount of character development that Rhythm separately and then Shion separately and then them together, like you know their development together was absolutely amazing. Like honestly, I've said this a lot too, but next to Alpha and Shion, Shion and Rhythm is actually my favorite pairing before them because like. The only fact you go from like instant spite to like instant love and support is like super duper wholesome. And when I gun past, or like maybe around like the mid game towards the end game, you know how you're like more towards the interludes I'd said before, you know, you're going like Lanagus, or you're like, um, or you have like uh, the thorns are sacrificed, like that scene on the cliffside, or the uh, the second cliffside scene too, like all of that stuff. Like, man, Rinwell really, really changed. And it's really, like, wholesome and actually really changing. Or, I mean, really moving to see how much Rinwell changed. Like, uh, one of the most, like, ongoing thoughts I have about her is that she's like, oh, yeah, I want to be a message for good, not for hate. And then, like, when you talk to her, when Shion and Alfin talk to Rinwell, more as, like, a pairing, she's like, oh, yeah, you know, I'd love the, like, cross the Renans and the Danans together because you know I'm a Danan mage and Renans do astral or do astral arts but I'm Danan so I'd like to you know cross them together so it's really amazing to see how each of the cast really and truly develop so yeah that was like the very last wish list thing and now <clears throat> Now we're gonna get to the Q and A. So I want, I just wanted to say thank you to everyone. Even if you like retweet the image or like the image, even if you didn't have questions, uh, I'm really grateful for any of the interactions I got in there. So we actually have two questions, and um, just thank you to anyone who participated. So the person who asked me is actually a mutual I got recently this year. Um, their name is Rye Tales of Final Fantasy XIV or FF14. They asked, "Do you think Tales of Rise successfully communicated their names for this entry in the series, which are evolution and inheritance? Can these themes be found in the in the story as well?" Now that's actually an extremely good question, and I had mentioned in my posts that the questions had to have really good substance, no other matter, and that's actually a really good. Uh, actually a very great question. Like, it's a very profound question. So, when I think about this, uh, evolution and inheritance, when I think of evolution, you know, evolution relates to change. And in this game itself, change is a massive thing. I think every single character of the main cast especially evolve in some way. Like, for example, Alvin really, like, like, how do I explain this? Like, I feel like, especially, um, Alpha and Shion together really evolved as a pairing. Like, at the beginning, you know, they they felt kind of indifferent towards one another, but then they really realized that they actually really cared for each other despite the differences. And like, I feel like the entire game itself was just about learning to involve or evolve is human beings and you know consider empathy and consider like setting differences aside which i think is really powerful and really really touching so i think that answers the evolution part but for inheritance now this is kind of lightly touching on it i don't know if like fully 
Um, but knowing how this question is asked, I feel like this is probably a running theme in probably all the Tales games, but knowing in fact inheritance usually relates to something passed down. So <laughs> the only way I can think of this is Xion Vimeir Aimer's Damor's relationship to Naori. Like, you know, she inherited the thorns from her and Alfin felt really bad about it because that's what prevented the world from being obliviated, so yeah, in hindsight, both of these scenes are actually extremely profound, and they definitely, definitely can be found in this story. So I hope that answers the question enough. Uh, I feel like I kind of lightly answered the evolution part, sort of, but I'll just leave it as it is. So thank you for asking that. And you also answered, or asked another question, which I think is really great. So. Rai at Tales of FF14 also asks, By the way, I love how you also adore Xion and Alvin's relationship, because their relationship growth was done very well in my opinion. But I'm curious to hear how you felt about other character relationships. Can you name a few and explain why you like and dislike them? So, I think for sure, as I've said time and time again, uh, each of the main pairings as you meet them throughout the narrative, so that means Jon and Alfin is one, Rinwell and Law is one, and then Dilhelm and Katara is one. Those pairings are all great. Like, I feel like each of their relationships are super good, but as I had mentioned in the wishlist part, Xion and Rinwell is extremely, extremely good too. Because like, it feels like at the beginning of this game, like for sure, you're just like, okay, these two are obviously not going to be friends like at all. Like you feel like that for the entire uh, Sicily the Apart. You're just like, okay, Rinwell hates Xion for the rest of her life. But then, once you get to Niaz, you realize why she's hanging on to that spite the entire time. So it's just like, wow. Once you get that out of the way, then she, then Rinwell really learned to get past it. So, yeah, I mean, them for sure too. Um, are there any relationships I dislike? Now that, to be fair, that's actually a hard question, but I did contemplate about this a bit, and I don't know if I'm right or wrong in saying this, but I'm just going to say it to be transparent, but I feel like the relationship between Zephyr and Law could have worked a lot better. Like, I know, I mean, it makes sense, they kind of had to, like, get the story pacing moved along, and then you had to have that breaking point for Alfin so that Xion could... You know, as I'd mentioned before, have that moment of reciprocity again, and then instead of, um, so I, it showed that Xiang really cared. But I feel like in this part, uh, yeah, I feel like Zephyr and Log could have worked a little more, cause like uh, all you knew, it was kind of very baseline. It was just like, okay, so Zephyr was Law's dad, but then. Actually, now that I think about it, though, Law does talk about his relationship with him past the point a lot. So maybe that's not the right answer. I mean, now that I do think about it, yeah. Law did, it, which does make it seem very true. But it is kind of sad, though, because when he already passed away, so... Yeah. I guess in hindsight, that's my answer. But... Is there any other that I thought was bad? Not really, no. I, I don't think any of the main cast, like, as I'd mentioned already, I don't think any single pairing, like, I don't care how you spin it, I think every single pairing, regardless if it's not the actual canon couple or not, actually do really, like, work well together. So, yeah. Thank you so much for asking me questions in the first place. So, yeah. Thank you for coming to the small Q&A segment. And now, probably the part that everybody's been wondering about this comfort character segment now this is gonna come from a very deep personal genuine place in my heart um at face value it's probably like why does this like Xion, Vimer, Imeris, Game or Girl even matter to you a lot well there's a lot of different things and in order to kind of like try to explain this you know an actual human level because like I feel like this runs really really deep not just like personally but there's also like psych 
psychological and sociological factors tied to it. So I'm gonna try my best to explain this. And I've used a lot of certain terms in order to like stand up for it. So the first thing I wanna talk about, which is probably the best thing to talk about for any sort of comfort character is first impressions. And I wrote about this on Tumblr recently, but oh man, the very first time I, you know, already loaded up Tales of Rise. Oh, I'm playing for the first time. You would not believe how speechless I was when Xion first appeared on screen. Cause like, I don't know if I'd mentioned this during segment one, but like, I was really going into this game super blind. Like, I didn't really know too much about Tales. I was just like, oh, it's a role-playing game that everyone wants to play. Maybe I should play it. No, in fact, I'm really into JRPGs. And yeah, like, I feel like the way that Xion just appeared literally just hit me like a truck. I was just like, wow, she is so freaking gorgeous, dude. <laughs> like, I was just like, man, she's the main heroine. If she's already that fashionable for like the first 10 frames of the game, man. And like I'll say every single time, there's not a single bad frame of her. Which explains my like 1,400 and constantly growing screenshots of her. So, yeah. First impressions were like absolutely astounding. Like ridiculous. So now we're actually going to get to like some things that make more personal sense. Uh, something that I like saying in lines with comfort characters it's something i like to call personal strength and personal strength is kind of like how the character themselves just grew like relation like based on relationships how they did their actions and stuff thing like that so yeah personal strength is kind of like how they personally of course decide to reach out like it requires a lot of strength for them to reach out and be like Oh, I want to confess about this, or oh, I'm like really sorry about this, so yeah. And we're gonna actually go down each of the main relationships that Xion had. So the first one, of course, is Xion and Alvin. And like, something that's really, really, really profound about this is that like, Xion couldn't really handle how soft and, you know, kind hearted Alvin was at the beginning because like, she was just trying to find someone she could confide in. And like, knowing the fact Alvin willingly, willingly opened up for her was like super, super touching. And like, <laughs> I think it's funny too to think about it, is that their love story, um, as much as I think about it now, is that like, it's also really interesting to think about it this way, is that like, they were actually relying each on each other the entire time throughout the game like sure it might have been more of like a build-up but i feel like they were always there for each other like sure like the very moment that alfin had reached out to xion for the first time and she was like you know what i really need to rely on someone and that kind of goes back to her like you know how she had been so lonely she really just needed to find someone who actually cared about her so i think that's super touching and next would be, as I mentioned already, Xion and Rinlo. Like, man, the evolution of, like, hate the love is just, like, extremely, extremely moving. Like, I always find their relationship very wholesome. It just goes to show that, like, if someone really hates someone, like, if they can really find something to get past, like, if they can really get past their hate, like, you can have, like, a beautiful, a beautiful, like, bountiful relationship with someone. So I really really like their friendship or relationship either one really like a lot that's why in this in these notes i put it right below Xion and alvin it's like for sure like man it's always so cute seeing them together i actually kind of wish more of the skits had more of them together but you know you've got like six characters so it's kind of asking for a lot but still next would be Xion and kasara well the thing it's really interesting about Kisara being the mother figure is that like she really understood where Xion was coming from in a lot of places like that one skit where um it was called different forms of affection and that skit Rinwell and Kisara were asking Xion about what she thought of Alfin knowing the fact he got all of his senses back this was past the point where 
you um she had already gotten saved or actually this is more post game stuff but basically what happened is that um when you go back to Legion and you enable the skit Rinwell's like hey Xion like how are you and Alfin like getting along now since he got all of his senses back and then Xion's like well now that I think about it I feel like if Alfin was like this at the beginning I never would have like you know been with him but then and then she's like but then again these feelings are so complicated and being the mother that Kisara always is it's just like hey I know what it's like to love someone but you can't reach out it's like Alfin's still here like you should take what you're given and then you know what happened they got married so yeah I think that's like really really cute like Kisara is such a great mother figure to like everyone basically everyone in the party so I think the relationship between the uh those two also like it's really cute next I kind of wish it was explored more which maybe answers the question that Rai asked but still um I feel like the relationship between Xion and Law could have been explored a little more, but still actually really cute. Um, there, there aren't like too many skits, but like uh, in the one where um, after you do the subquest where you do the crossover, you know, with like Edna and all of them and Kronos and everything, when you're doing that subquest. <laughs> There's the part it's like, wow, have we really have we really explored everywhere in Dana? And then it's just like, um, Law gets confused because Alfin answered Rinwell's question, but then she's like, wait, how come when Alfin answered Rinwell's question, I didn't get the same answer? And then she was just like, well, it seems like you're still trying to find the answers to a complicated woman's heart. So I think there's some really like cute little interactions between Xion and Law, but they're kind of dispersed. Like, there's no straight interactions between the two. But, for sure, they're still friends, so I think that's great. And then finally, um, kind of going along the same lines, I kind of feel like Xion and Doholin would be a really interesting pairing to explore to. I mean, they're both Renin, so, yeah. Oh, actually, I guess in some ways, I guess most of the skits... Oh, wait, actually, now I think about it. Inland, I guess, yeah. Those two did work a lot together, so... Yeah, <laughs> whenever I think about the first time you arrive in Lanigas, it was just like, ah uh, shoot, okay, uh, we got like four Danins and two Rens, alright, just let the let the Renins do the talking, and the Jia and Dolim are just like, okay, sure, we'll do it. So, yeah, I guess they, their relationship did get explored a little more. So yeah, that's the personal strength part that I want to talk about. And then, oh, this was... I think this is just really cute pointing out, knowing fact how much I posted about it. Uh, there's a Tumblr on tag, or I mean a Tumblr, I mean on Tumblr I made a tag, to fix, like a bunch of very specific Xion tags just for her, and this one I made pers personally just for her. Oh man, so perfect. I literally was just like, alright, prettiest anime girl in existence, boom, that's it. She deserves that. And it's so funny because like, when I think about this in hindsight, I was just like, yeah, Xion really doesn't look bad in anything, honestly. So, yeah, God bless her goddess in ethereal beauty. So, I just wanted to say that, just to be straight. But to me, personally, her Noble Rose and her Maiden outfit are always going to be my most favorite outfit of her. So, yeah, I'm just going to say it. She doesn't deserve, or she doesn't need anything else. She can literally just wear her Maiden outfit. That's it. So... Yeah. Now, getting back to something much more personal is that uh, when I talk about comfort characters, I feel like comfort characters are kind of like an anchor. And, you know, something that holds you down. Something that you can confide in. Something that you can, like... A character that you can look up to and be like, you know what, I feel like I relate to them a lot. And this... These terms that I'm throwing at you guys are kind of like the prerequisite to some of the... Um, the article that I want to write next year about comfort characters because I feel like they're really really impactful and like depending on the person because like I feel like we all do have comfort characters but depends on the context like some of us do some of us don't some of us get a little uncomfortable having them but honestly there's literally no shame in having them like 
you can confide in them, you can look up to them, you can be inspired by them. Like, there's literally nothing wrong with any of that. So, it's harmless. So, yeah. Something that I've said a lot, and I actually mean this very, very truthfully, is that her story, like, Xion's story of loneliness is actually really, really relatable to me. Because this year, when I'd gotten into Tales of Rise, if I didn't, like, I think about it now. If I didn't search up the Xion hashtag, and then literally like, follow a couple of people, I literally wouldn't have met like the 50, 60 people that I've met, uh, like, so quickly, uh, in these last couple of months. Uh, it started, I think, late September, early October, yeah, that's when I'd be in the game. And, I kid you not, I was just obsessing over the game by myself, I had this master thread, and they were like, no interactions on it. Like, I was just talking about by myself. And then, in relation to Xion, like, I was actually pretty lonely just talking about this stuff. Because, like, you know, it was something I really liked, but no one could relate to it. So then, once I had taken the step, like, that very, very important step, I was just like, you know what? What happens if I, like, go on Twitter and, like, you know, potentially just try to find people who like it? And then... Just like that, boom. Like, it's crazy, and I don't mean this in a prideful way, in any extent, but like, the amount of interaction I get nowadays is actually so insane. Like, I don't, de <clears throat> I don't deserve any of it, but like, man, I've met such close friends in such a short amount of time, and they're all really good people. So, yeah, I'm just super grateful for it every single day. And like, just much like Xion, she just had to learn to listen to others and just learn to reach out. So, literally me. So, like, yeah, you see these parallels, like, they make a lot of sense. So, that's why she's so important to me. And then, finally, um, another term that I'm going to throw around to describe comfort characters is something called an inflection point. Inflection means looking inward. And, like, this goes back to the anchor part. But, like, if I hadn't reached out, because, like, you know... The thing about social media is that you think about being rejected almost all the time. I mean, you're putting yourself in the open, so it, there's never a day when you don't think about that. So, knowing the fact that I was hesitant, she almost just like that. So I really relate that or relate to that a lot. She would said like said lines like, "I'm gonna be doomed to a life of solitude. I'll always be alone." I was just like, man. Knowing the fact how much this year has turned around, that sounds a lot like me. So, that's why she's extremely relatable to me. And then next, well, I think a lot of us really confide in this too, is that Xion and Alphans, and I always love putting it this way the most, is that their fairy tale love story, like, it's always going to be inspiring. Like, I don't care what year it is, like, I can think about Xion and Alphans together, I'll always find something to be happy about, or always find something to be like, or something to gush over. Like, it is so, like, it's something, you know, almost anyone will dream about. Like, their love story is very inspiring, you know? Putting aside your massive differences, they're two opposite races. Like, you know what? You know how much of a challenge that is to get over? So, yeah, I think it's really, like, I think anyone can seek something like that, or be sought out for that. In the words of myself, no words can really truly describe how impactful Xion Vimer, Imeris Daymor, or Xion and Alphans love story is to me. So, yeah. I just wanted to put that out there. I think it's incredibly heartwarming every single time I think about it. I'm super grateful we have something like this. Like, that it exists, for that matter. So, yeah. That part of Xion's story. And yeah, that basically wraps up every single part of this comfort character segment. It's really fun. I mean, I literally talk about Xion every day on my Tumblr, on my Twitter, and there's no shame in it. Like, there's literally no shame in it. So, I'm going to say this on this mic in person so that people know that I'm actually really saying this with my heart, but there is literally zero shame in confiding being inspired by, looking up to comfort characters in any way. Like, if they can keep you going, that's a reason to have them. If they can make you happy, 
that's a reason to have them. So I'm always here to uplift people and like encourage them. Like it's okay. Like we all have things like that. And like it's literally one of the most harmless things ever to have. So knowing the fact that I post about and gush about Xion literally every day, you sh you don't have to have any shame about liking whatever character you like. So yeah, I just want to say that like. The way Xion is a comfort character to me in truly every aspect that, you know, I unapologetically talk about her a lot. She has a lot of personal strength. She's an anchor. She's an inflection point to me. She has a really inspirational love story. And no amount of posts can describe her impact on me. So yeah, there you go. I hope you guys can also find comfort characters that you really like, you know? ones that you can look up to so yeah i'm sorry this seems overly dramatic or overly inspirational or whatever but i'm being incredibly honest here so yeah anyway you guys this wasn't nearly as long as segment one but i just wanted to say like always a massive massive thank you for taking your time to watch me gush about this game now before you make any presumptions, uh, this isn't necessarily the end of the Tales of Arise podcast. I know I'd mentioned before, segment two is going to be the last thing, but who knows? Keep your eyes open. We all got to be mindful as Tales fans to see if they actually, you know, give us something more. And who knows? Maybe I'll talk about it more. So yeah, don't necessarily count this as the end. But I just wanted to say... Like usual, thank you guys so much for spending whatever time, whatever side of the planet you're on to watch me talk about this. Um, I never realized how much I really, really enjoyed podcasting. So, yeah, I can just go on and on and on about things I like. This wasn't nearly necessarily as long as you can see. I'm looking at my timer. It's only about 46 minutes. So, yeah, this wasn't like an entire narrative. It was just things I just wanted to gush about, the gush about, you know, the best things. So, yeah, it's about... 45 minutes long oh yeah so since um you know tales of rise did win role-playing game of the year uh who knows what awaits us you know the game hasn't even been existing for that long and when it hits 2022 dude it's only gonna be like four months old so like it's still in its very early phases and that of course means i'm still gonna be talking about Xion like every day so yeah don't count it out and before I leave off, uh, people did request that I do talk about, you know, that one brain punk game, Scarlet Nexus. So, yeah, I hope you guys are looking forward to next year. Um, I'm actually am going to be planning to do a podcast fully on Scarlet Nexus 2. I do have over 100 hours on the game. It'll be lots of fun to talk about. So as always, you guys, thank you so, so much from the bottom of my heart. For listening to me talk about Tales of Rise again in segment two. Um, I really hope to see you guys whenever I do um, on this channel. Thank you so much for all the support. It's been so overwhelming. So yeah. As always, you guys, stay honest. I really do hope to see you. Bye.